Conversations. A podcast to read by. Where we trade unusual books and have fun. I'm Michelle. And I'm Tila. And today we're talking about Lady Almina and the Real Down Abbey. And Neil Gaiman's The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Let's get started. First, we're going to talk about Red Last Week. We're going to talk about Darren Greatly. And The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Do you want to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first, Tila. Okay. Yeah. What'd you think? Well, I have to say, <laughs> yikes, I felt seen. <laughs> Great book. Loved it. It was heavy. It was, it was, a, it was a heavy start. but I Very heavy yeah. book. So, Brene Brown is a shame researcher. She seemed like a pretty awesome person. Actually, seems like a human and not a psychopath when talking about this. That's a uh, key. Very important. <laughs> and, God. Yeah, you like liked the writing style? I love the writing style. Like, her voice is very strong. Yes. And it just has personality. Yeah, it does. It's got pizzazz. It's not a boring... It's, yeah, you know. Yeah. Kind of thought it was going to be a bit slightly boring, but... No, it, it was pretty good. It's it's mm-hmm. I say it's pretty packed all the way through. It's a little. Um, I kind of got to the end. I wished it was longer, but I I, yeah. I, I I enjoyed it when I read it. Also, I think the the byline of how the courage to be vulnerable transforms the way we live, love, parent, and lead. I'm seeing the parent more when yeah. I read through it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's consistent. Like, I don't know, just no. He said there's only that, that one chapter at the end. Oh yeah. Um, I hate the like byline in this. It sounds terrible. It's uh, it's this is only like one chapter about parenting. It's not really about that. Why um, is that the byline? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, great cool. book. Great. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Well, it's time to talk about the Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Now, I want to say before I start that she does. She has a really pretty way of writing. It's very beautiful. It's uh, it's a little. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a little dense. I think I, I might be slightly biased because uh, high fantasy is usually not for me. It, uh, it is a dense book. There's a lot going on for something. There like, is a lot. It's always something happening. I think you have to read it really, really slowly to like really get everything. Um, yeah. We so did. that's what I tried to do as much as I could. Mm-hmm. I'm not very good at it though. So I was just like really trying to carefully. And I'm sure if you read this book three times over, you could like make a whole one of those like detective walls with the little oh, strings absolutely. of yarn. You could connect everything together. There was a lot of stuff I didn't get. But I think I got most of it. I got the general gist. The mm. thing I didn't like was that there was so much detail and yet it was still very confusing because she describes environments and like objects really mm. well, but I just, I didn't know what was going on. Especially the last like four pages of past, it's past so confusing. four chapters. They're just mush. Every, everything's like happening all at once and it all like collapses in on itself. And I get that it's supposed to be kind of like... Woo, wishy-washy, but I was a little lost. But then I got to the end, and I was like, the ending is um, solid enough that even the dummies can can understand the book has a has an ending. So it's it was pretty good. I liked it in the end, and it was a nice book to read. We had a, a power outage last night, and so it was a nice book to read in the dark by candlelight because it was like like dark at eight thirty, and yeah, it was a, it was a fun read, and I think I had a good time reading it. Yeah. yeah. I will say that when I read it, we read a period of about two months. Oh. And and we basically, like, every couple of chapters, we'd, like, I think, you know how there's, like, split into six sections? Yes. We'd read, like, either, like, half an entire section. Right. And then we'd check in and talk about all the little details stuff. Oh, so that makes more sense. That yeah. probably made it, probably it a bit helps. better. Yes, because you read it in book club, right? Yeah. So it probably helps to read this in a group mm-hmm. and have people <laughs> be like, this is what this meant. Yeah. Um, and this is this person. Yes. I never, un- I didn't understand where the bees came from. I get that they're, like, a pi- primordial bee-ing. <laughs> <laughs> a primordial bee thing, a primordial being, but I didn't really understand why bees or what why the not? bees deal was because I get owls. I understand the owl choice. There's like an owl king because they're like pretty common mythology theme, but the bees were confusing. I was lost on the bees. There's um, a lot of honey. Yeah, it's the honey. There's a lot of really gross descriptions of honey, too, where you, like, drown in the sea of it. Yeah. That sounds really unpleasant. Yeah. But it was very visceral. Because there's so much detail, every experience is, like, really, like, intense. So when Dory, like, one of the main characters is, like, drowning in the sea of honey, you feel, like, really, 
Ugh, like you need to take a shower. That was the only other thing I didn't like about this was I didn't like the pacing of the romance um, yeah. that happens because they meet in the first couple chapters and then the love interest just disappears for a, kind of a big section of the book and then he's back and then there's I, I probably if you read it over two months it seems like slow burn but because I read this in a week it felt like they got together like that like they were just they yeah. they were reunited and they like danced together once and they were like oh my god I love you and that was the whole thing so I think maybe this is good if you're gonna like read this and then go on to something else and then come back and like very slowly work your way through it and write things down blah 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 um but I didn't do that so I think maybe I didn't read it as effectively as I could have read it yeah welcome back we're gonna play a round of we're not really strangers I'm gonna give Michelle a question and she's gonna give me a question pick a card any card do I look kind? Do you look kind? Explain. <laughs> I think you do. I think you do. If I saw you walking down the street. If I saw you walking down the street, I have a resting bitch face. You do. I walk but very it's not menacingly. That, it's not, not that. You do have a, you have a stock. That's what it is. It's like <laughs> a, a stride, you know? Mm-hmm. I walk like that too, where you like really know where you're going, but you've definitely got like a... But I think if I saw like if I saw you standing in line at a coffee shop and I needed directions or something, I don't know. I don't know if you look kind. I think you look maybe a little slightly menacing. I think it's yeah. I don't know. I think it depends on where you're from. Maybe if you're from like Kansas, you're like blue hair, Ugh. <laughs> spooky. People do randomly come up and ask me for directions. Though. Yeah, sometimes. And yeah. I give them good directions, hopefully. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on where you are. Do I seem like a morning person or a night owl? Why? Can I go off of what I actually know? Yes, you can. You can base it off. I know you're a morning person (laughs) because you get up at like 5 or 6 a.m. I get up at 6, yeah. And just like do work and exist and is able to function. There are reasons for my waking up at 6 and it's not because I just love 6 o'clock. It's because my family... (laughs) I do enjoy waking up early, but I don't, it's because, um, my, we all eat breakfast together and everybody here like gets all, gets ready in the morning. And my sister has to leave for school at seven twenty on the dot. There's like no other way for her to get, it's, it's far. Right. Yeah. And so, um, it's, it's walkable. No, it's a different school now. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Never mind. <laughs> It's, she, it's, it's quite far, and so she has to leave the house at 7.20 exactly, and so there's no, and then if we eat breakfast together, that means we have to eat at 7 o'clock exactly, and mm-hmm. I get up. So that means after breakfast, it does mean I get like a whole 40 minutes by myself in the house, because my parents leave, and so I can do work and spend a long time getting ready. Mm-hmm. Somehow I still end up late pretty often, but, you know, it's a system that I really enjoy now. I like, I, when I was in middle school... Um, we had to go to school at the same time, my sister and I, because we were in school together, and it was terrible. We had to wake up pretty early, and and then you just, like, left the house so... Because school started at 8, so you had to leave the house at, like, 7.30 and walk there. Oh, and it was God. cold and windy, and it was terrible. But I'll tell my children that I walked to school in the snow both ways someday. I'll have to hold that over their heads. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's get started again. The The book that I'm recommending to Michelle is Lady Elmina and the Real Downton Abbey, The Lost Legacy of Highclere Castle. This is a really fun book. I read it over quarantine when I had nothing else to do. Um, this is a much lighter nonfiction book than the one I gave you. A lot less emotional heavy lifting in this book. Um, it's the history of... Uh, have you seen Downton Abbey? Yes. Um, it's the history of the place where Downton Abbey was filmed, or not the whole history, but it is about this one lady who lived there, um, Lady Elmina, who married into the family, and it's really, um, really pretty writing, it was just, it's just like a nice, like, fun read, it's really interesting, there's pictures of it, this, um, woman, Lady Elmina, uh, converted the house during World War One mm-hmm. into, like, a soldier's hospital type situation, oh, okay. and so it's really interesting, she turns out to be a really cool lady, um, and there's just like a lot of stuff going on the whole time. And it's, yeah, it was really, I don't know, it was a really interesting read and I read it a bunch and it's like a nice comforting 
<sighs> a bit of a breath of fresh air after the very intense book I gave you. So it's yeah. a little, little bit of a lighter read, but I still thought it was really good. And it was like really well written. Awesome. I, I watched Downton Abbey growing up, so. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Neil Gaiman's The Ocean at the End of the Lane. This is another weird one. This, yeah, I've heard that. I haven't read I, I haven't read this book, but I know yeah. of it. It's about a little boy who, like, he's like, re- this guy is like recounting his childhood with this one girl named, like, Lottie. And basically, she believed that the pond in her backyard and her house at the end of the lane was an ocean. And so it's like, like going to, like, fey and mysticism mm. and, I don't know, just... The child's imagination, and young love, and all that. Huh. I don't know. It's like I t- kind of don't remember it, but also it's a, I remember really enjoying reading. Yeah, it. and you have the illustrated version, I have which the is the illustrated fun. version. Look, we both has a bunch of like dark and stormy figures. Nice. Well, we both picked books with pictures in it this time. Woo! Yay! <laughs> so maybe that's a theme for the week. Um, pictures. <laughs> this book with pictures in them. We, uh, I've read, I read uh, Neil Gaiman, um, Norse mythology. Have you read that book? No. Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology is just a, a retelling of a bunch of the Norse myths. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also, it's quite pretty. I like his writing anyway. So great. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> second round. I'm going to pick the cards before this time so there's a little uh, less of a gap. Here we are for our second round of We're Not Really Strangers. Mm-hmm. Pick a card, any card. They've already been chosen. Okay. What reality show do you think I'm most likely to binge watch? Reality show. Explain. <gasps> <laughs> oh, reality show. Okay, what kind of, well, does, cook, does cooking shows count as a real? But that's kind of a boring pick. Yeah. Would you watch a dating show ever? Let's see. Hmm. I can't believe they haven't come out with a Bridgerton dating show yet. I feel like if you watched Downton Abbey, you'd watch that. Because it seems like such an obvious pick, you know? I do like historical stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god! Have you seen this? I saw a clip of this. It was so crazy. I'm not saying that you would watch it, because I think <laughs> that's a deep insult to say someone would watch this. But it's a dating show called um, Dated and Related. Oh, I... Yes, and so people go on the show not to date their cousins. They go on the show with a a sibling or a cousin to date other people who have also brought their sibling, but the sibling is also looking for love, and then you have to, like, approve the dates with, like, the... It's so... What? It's so terrible. We we have a society of run out of ideas, you know? Oh, God. That's terrible. Anyway, I'm not saying you would watch that, but I was thinking about that the other day. How crazy that is. I remember is. you talking about it. Yes, I was, ugh, crazy. Okay. Are you ready? Hey, to what, to, to what reality show? Well, do I don't watch? know. I don't know. Would you watch Dated, would you watch Dated and Related? If you know. had to? Someone, I don't I was know. forced to by gunpoint. Yeah. I don't was, know. I don't really watch reality show. shows. I used to watch a lot of cooking shows as a kid. A lot of, like, a lot of Chopped. I like, like, also, like, 2000 shows. Yeah. I've been... Big early Kardashians. Actually, no, I've been... I've been, like, trying to get make my way through Supernatural. Oh, which yeah. Which... That's a slog. It is a slog. It's a very long. I'm on season nine. <laughs> they just killed Of off 17, a... right? Of 15. They're Fif- 15. Excuse me. But I'm there's, sorry. like, 23 episodes per season. Ugh. My mom is trying to watch all of Grey's Anatomy right now, which is also a slog, because yeah. there's, like, 30 seasons of that, which is crazy. That is so maybe yeah. That, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll count that. Okay, mm-hmm. you ready? Yeah. Do I seem like someone who would get a name tattooed on myself? Why or why not? No. You do not <laughs> seem like a person who would get a name tattooed on yourself. That's probably true. I feel like if you did... I don't, I don't know if you'd even have a tattoo, honestly. But if you did, I feel like it'd be, like, an image or, like, a little pictogram or something. Yes, exactly. Not yeah. a... <laughs> what if it was a celebrity? What if it was a celebrity? What if I was, like, it was the Dolly Parton? Big Dolly Parton tattoo. I can see you doing Dolly Parton, but also, like, I don't know. Now I'm just thinking about the font you'd use. <laughs> <laughs> just... What's Dolly Parton font? What does I feel it like look like? like italics and, like, serifs. Yeah, probably. Know? Like... I don't know. It's probably true. I mean, like Garamond. <laughs> not exactly Garamond. Similar. <laughs> but like times. Like, Something like, around there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, maybe, maybe, maybe so when I, maybe, um, uh, later on in life, I will get a tattoo of just Dolly Parton's name right here in <laughs> Times New Roman to commemorate. Okay, if you're gonna do it, like, do it, like, a long time. A long? Not, not in a... Not, not a respect. Let's just, like, I don't know. I, I had like a, it. uh, my, at my middle school, we had a Shakespeare teacher. We did not learn to act Shakespeare, but we learned about Shakespeare. It was a weird class. And he had a, okay. all <laughs> of a, some Hamlet monologue on, like, in a circle around his arm. Cool. So they get that. Yeah. So, but <laughs> to read it, so you'd have to, like... Go around That's... in a circle. It was a weird tattoo. It was a weird. He was a weird yeah. guy. He was very loud. He was so loud. Was that the one you really liked or a different? One? I did like him, but he had weird tattoos, and okay. it was weird that he was yeah. there. Mm-hmm. It was a weird class. So now we need to do an outro. What do we want to say for this? Hey guys, I hope you liked our video. Uh, we put a lot of effort into it. We're using that. We. <laughs> We love reading your books so great. And thank you guys for watching. Woo! <laughs> um. Pretty great. Well. Yeah. Do we want to use that? Or do you want to do something a little more genuine? <laughs> Is that fine? Sure, let's use it. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> bye. Bye-bye.